and welcome to Shifty Crab Newsbreak. I am one of your hosts, Terry Jeffs, and today I am joined by the campaign arena debater dominator, Mr. Adam Berry. How are you doing? Hey, Adam? Terry. I'm good, thanks, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to discussing some news. I wasn't available for, for last week, so I'm kind of bursting at the seams of all the gaming news goodness. Yeah, you missed a very sensible... Uh, yeah, yeah. Didn't go off the wire at all news. It was absolutely fine. You don't need to watch it. It, yeah. was, it was great. I, I, I well, see what hijinks you guys got up to when I wasn't wasn't pirating pirating the ship, steering the ship. Yeah, uh, that that's week. What happens. That's what happens when the parents are away. So I'm back now. I'm back on it, and we're going to be discussing. We've got. It's not been a crazy news week. There's a, there's a few things in there. That I've been looking forward to discussing, but it's been pretty quiet over. I, I think it, we're getting to that calm before before the storm of E3. Yeah, I think a lot of stuff's being going to start getting held back now. But we've got some good stuff to uh, discuss. First of all, though, just wanted to do a bit of housekeeping. Let you guys know it's um, the new episode of the podcast is now live, episode fifteen, where we discuss our E3 predictions of what we um, think is going to be happening out there. There's um, some cool stuff that we we discuss. We've done a little point system. Um, I think I was probably a little bit safe in my predictions, but you know that's what it's all about. You got to you're playing to you gotta, win, though. You got to play to win. Go make those points up. And yeah, there's a few personal hopeful things going on there as well but um yeah it's cool when you should check that out and we also obviously discuss all the things we've been playing watching the usual stuff um but enough about that because this is shifty crab news break where we discuss well just a pinch of the the week's gaming news and talk about all those juicy games we can't wait to get our claws on starting with our first story announcing PlayStation's new partnership with Discord. This is over at PlayStation's official SIE blog. And this is a statement from Jim Ryan, president and CEO. At PlayStation, we are constantly looking for new ways to enable players around the world to connect with one another, form new friendships and communities, and share fun experiences and lasting memories. It's in this spirit that we're excited to announce a new partnership with Discord, the communication service popularized by gamers and used by more than 140 million people every month around the world. Together, our teams are already hard at work connecting Discord with your social and gaming experience on PlayStation Network. Our goal is to bring the Discord and PlayStation experiences closer together on console and mobile starting early next year, allowing friends, groups, and communities to hang out, have fun, and communi communicate more easily while playing games together. To bring these exam experiences to life for our players, Sony Interactive Entertainment has made a minority investment as part of Discord's Series H round. From our very first conversation with co-founders Jason Citron and Stan Vishnevsky, yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by their life, their lifelong love for gaming and our team's shared passion to help bring friends and communities together in new ways. Empowering players to create communities and enjoy shared gaming experiences is at the heart of what we do. So we are beyond excited to start this journey with one of the world's most popular communication services. It's always a privilege to work with great partners to bring fresh experiences to our fans and we'll have more to share in the coming months. Stay tuned to our channel and discord for all the latest updates. Adam, what are your thoughts on this, especially coming off the the, the, the rumors recently of Microsoft actually buying Discord? Yeah, this is a, a clever move by PlayStation. Uh, I was saying it uh, on the news that Discord is what is predominantly used now. It's the kind of go-to for voice chat, especially in gaming. And PlayStation's never really had a great interface for party chat it's never been an easy thing to use it's got easier with the playstation 5 a little bit but discord will make that so much more streamlined um i think it's a clever move and uh yeah i think it's great for everybody really with, with the microsoft rumors and they pretty much were rumors weren't they there was yeah. nothing confirmed about it do you do you think this all that rumbling all that smoke started from this is it this what it was? And, and, and there was some wires that were crossed. 
Maybe. But I feel like Microsoft this in the last couple of years have become that company that they're rumored to be buying everyone. Yeah. You know, well, so let's not let's not mention well, any E3 predictions right now. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's true, <laughs> but they are rumored to be buying everyone because they're yeah. throwing money around a lot, big deals. And Discord um had been ru- there's been rumors for ages that Discord was gonna get bought out. Um so Xbox was the logical candidate. But yeah, maybe this was the rumblings and people have, uh, yeah, like just got it wrong, really. Uh, obviously, it just seems Sony a weird coincidence, them, but... doesn't it? Yeah, it does seem a weird coincidence. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the rumors of what spurred Sony, maybe. Mm. Like they've gone, okay, yeah, well, we want to get in here first. Even if this is a rumor, we'll get in and get, get a share, get some shares in the company, become a shareholder. Yeah, yeah. I think I do think it's a good move for them because, you know, it's, it seem like a broken record at this point. But one thing that we always seem to go on about is how Microsoft just are doing all the right things in like putting this platform together. This like it's just mm. such a cohesive like platform that transcends generations. And PlayStation really doesn't have that, and the community features are never like the, the highlight of the PlayStation experience no. and, and the way that that works and online, play, and, and online uh, services. And I do think that this is a really good move because yeah, I mean, obviously everyone uses um, discord and it's got such a huge kind of install base and it's becoming like the standard for at, at the very least like PC gaming. Um, you know, everyone has a discord channel which they end up joining uh, to speak. So to be able to have that, built in like literally baked into the uh to the playstation's um like os like that would be that'd be great because yeah i mean the part i've I've not i've not even gone into a party on on the playstation 5 so i couldn't even tell you what it's like um i imagine it's not too dissimilar from playstation 4 not really exactly so they've not really yet like improved that in any way and and that was never really fantastic was it um no I think so, the screen, the screen in the screen in screen viewing is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that is good, and yeah, that, and and I don't cool. know about have they done much with the um, share play this gen? Like, because I don't really follow it. Like, you know, where you can just I'm kind not of invite sense. I don't think I touched. Yeah. I don't think I've ever touched share play, so it's no, it's never really been on my radar. Um, I just know that people are saying it was still a little bit clunky to do a party chat and stuff like that yeah so yeah. Dis- discord obviously will streamline that yeah like, it'll cool. be interesting to see how they integrate it yeah like, and not only that it would be, it's kind of going to be cross play as well isn't it so obviously if you're yeah. regardless of whatever you're playing on like you can just hop into that channel so if people are playing you know there could be people that are playing on their xbox people are playing on their playstation they're in one discord channel cool you can just la- launch that up straight from your playstation there's also other factors to this as well. So um, on a more technical point of view uh, is let's say me and you, for example, if we wanted to record some gameplay together, not live stream it and have our reactions be authentic, we can have a Discord video call going between us mm. while we're both playing on the PlayStation 5. Mm. And we can remotely record our gameplay. Or one, I can remotely record our gameplay or whatever. But, and we can have the live reactions from the Discord through the Discord chat. It's uh, That's good. there's lots of different. Don't get me wrong. There's easier ways of doing it, but the, it opens up a lot of options to people that might not have all the equipment in the world. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, I think it's a great move. Yeah, I guess we'll hear more about that leading up to uh, to next year. On to our next story. I read Eurogamer. Konami says it won't be at E3, but key projects are in deep development. This is by Wesley Yin Paul. Konami has pulled out of this year's E3. In a tweet, Konami said, due to timing, we will not be ready to present at E3 this year. However, the company insisted it's in deep development on a number of key projects. Updates are promised, are promised in the coming months, Konami added. The Entertainment Software Association, which organizes E3, said in a statement, quote, we support our partner Konami's decision to not participate in E3 this year and are excited to see what they'll be announcing in the future when they'll be ready to do do so. 
We can't wait for their return to E3 2022. But in the meantime, we look forward to sharing all of the highly anticipated reveals, programming, and so much more at this year's E3. Um, did you guys... Did, I couldn't remember if this... This this news wasn't out when we recorded when we recorded no. last week, was it? No, okay. Because um, I know it's been a little while since they um, actually announced this, but was you surprised by this at all? No. <laughs> I think we we spoke spoke about it in um, Slack, and yeah, I mean, the only thing that I was disappointed by, because let's be honest, like what what have Konami got going right now? They're literally just they're just sleeping on on a lot of dead franchises. I know there's people out there, obviously there's a reference in this article to silent hill people have been crying out for silent hill i don't think that we're going to be seeing any silent hill for a long time um i know there's all these rumors and stuff but i, I just, just can't see it um the one thing that did disappoint me was the the dream of the metal gear solid remake that we want yeah. you know that we, we're kind of dreaming of from blue point mm. but other than that what what are we going to be seeing from konami that we're going to miss out on. Pez. Pez, exactly. Pro Evolution Soccer. Yeah. Yeah. I think unless they unless they were coming with a Metal Gear, a Silent Hill, or a Castlevania, mm. like, which, do they even still have the rights to Castlevania, Konami? Yeah. I, I think they do, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there's no point in them turning up. Yeah. I'd like, love them really to give. I mean, you could say this about literally any franchise of Konami's, but I just li- I wish they'd just give Castlevania to someone that would do something with it, you know? Um, or Silent Hill, or yeah, like just, Metal oh Gear. God. Please, just I just want a new Metal Gear game that isn't. What was the last one? That zombie one? Oh God, I don't even want to talk about that. Uh, no, like, nah, that was just 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 give sad. me a new Metal Gear game, and but then without having Jima in it, it's gonna be. A difficult yeah that's the thing i don't even know if i want a new no, just I don't, give I don't, kojima yeah. metal gear like, yeah give kojima just, metal gear I, yeah. I don't particularly want a new one because what is metal gear solid without kojima it's not it's no, not exactly, a thing is yeah. it but i'm a we remake could get a, yeah. a remake yeah we could get a, a, a good remake of of mm. obviously the, it's got to be the first one like because yeah that's the only one that kind of literally warrants it um there's so many people that haven't played that game that have played other metal gears that haven't yeah. gone back and played the original the but, missing out they are missing out indeed, but um, I don't think we're going to be missing out too much with Konami not being at E3. So we've got we've got plenty of other stuff to look forward to there. Mm. Next story: Nintendo announces Game Builder Garage, a cross between Labo and Dreams. This is over at IGN by Cat Bailey. Nintendo has announced Game Builder Garage, a new game that will let you learn to make games from the minds at Nintendo. Its guided lessons and cute characters are designed to help you create a multitude of gaming experiences. On the face of it, the new game looks a lot like Dreams, which was released by released on PlayStation 4 in early 2020. It also seems to be in the spirit of Labo, which encouraged kids to craft unique items using cardboard. Game Builder Garage is designed to teach visual game programming by connecting creatures called Nodon. The, there are dozens of Nodon in in Game Builder Garage, each with its own unique function. Lessons will be available to teach you the basics of designing games with free programming mode available for those who want to go wild. The experiences touted in the trailer include platformers, shoot 'em ups and something called Tuna Cube Factory 2. It will also be available, it will also be possible to exchange and download games over the internet via local wireless, which you can then examine via free programming mode to learn their inner workings. To aid in development, Game Builder Garage will support a compatible mouse, which can be plugged into the USB port on the Switch dock. Um, Have have you checked this out at all, Adam? I have. I had a look at it. Do you know what? I am a huge advocate of dreams. Yeah. Um, And this anything that can get the next generation of game developers, um, I'm all for. Do I yeah. think the Nintendo is going to work smoothly? I think it'll be overly complicated and be a lot of menus. But um, I think, yeah, it, it's it's great. I think, yeah, more more like this, but you know. 
yeah I, i'm i'm the same with um with dreams i mean i love i just love media molecule i love everything they yeah. do um mm. dreams is just such a technical like accomplishment like the fact that you yeah. can just that you can just build anything in that game i just think it's mm. so cool to see like artists go wild in it so i i just love anything that pro- any games that provide these tools to people uh, particularly um you know for for young children to get into like creating and stuff like that and when um uh, labo was uh, announced i remember how excited i was because um i think when i mean first first saw the trailer for it i think um i don't even know if george was even born at that point but harry was just like a baby and i was like oh my god this looks one day when you get a switch and get a oh, switch yeah. with the kids i can't wait to do this with um with the kids because they they love especially particularly harry loves like crafting and and he's every morning he's like building things with like cardboard and paper and drawing his own little designing little games and stuff and i thought oh labo would be awesome and also thought oh he'd probably love dreams like i have to get that mm. at some point and so when i saw this i was like oh wow this is cool because he plays mario maker on his yeah. um on the on his uh, 3ds and um this just looks like all of that molded together and mm-hmm. obviously with the install base of the switch and how many kids are on the switch this is great because i feel like um the only thing we had prior to this and dreams was little big planet and little big planet is just very complicated for mm-hmm. um even for me I, I can't even like let alone like kids <laughs> I, I i i tried to make levels out of uh little big planet and hats off to the people that make some of the masterpieces in oh. those games but I can't do them. So um, to have something like this, this is really cool. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So yeah, hats off to Nintendo for putting this out there. Okay. Next story over at gamesindustry.biz. Toys for Bob reportedly suffers layoffs as it moves to support Call of Duty Warzone. And this is by James Batchelor. So this is an updated article. Um, I'm going to go to the original story first of all. Activision owned studio Toys for Bob has reportedly dismissed an unknown member of, member of staff. The layoffs appear to have occurred as the developer has shifted support development for Call of Duty Warzone, having announced its involvement on the game via Twitter yesterday. Nick, um, Nicholas Cole, a character designer who was contracted to work with Toys for Bob on Crash Bandicoot 4 until January this year, shared the news and called it the end of an era. Responding to another Twitter user, Cole added that everyone I interfaced with and worked along was let go, but added that it's not a totally, but that is not totally shuttering. It's not known how many other employees have been affected, although Blake Maloof, who worked at the studio as a game designer for more than a decade, indicated that they, that, they have also been made redundant. It's also unclear whether Toys for Bob's role on Call of Duty is only for season three of Warzone or if it's permanent. Gamesindustry.biz has reached out to Activision for more comment and clarification. Most, if not if not all, of Activision Studios now welcome Call of Duty following this shift for Toys for Bob and the decision to merge Tony Hawk's developer Vicarious Visions into Blizzard. So going to the updated um, part of the article now, um, Activision has denied that there has been any downsizing at Toys for Bob. Quote, reports of layoffs at Toys for Bob are incorrect, a representative told gamesindustry.biz. There has not been a reduction in personnel recently at the studio. The development team is operating fully and has a number of full time openings at this time. The studio is excited to continue supporting Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, and more recently provide additional development support to Call of Duty Warzone. Adam, yes. What are your thoughts? Somebody's oh, lying. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, someone's not telling the truth. Um, Firstly, let's take a look at what Activision just said there, that they are supporting Crash Bandicoot and... What does that even mean? I don't know. But what that doesn't say is they're working on other projects. No. So that's that, isn't it, really? Do they need more people to work on Call of Duty? Like, Like... I understand that it's a big thing and it makes a hell of a lot of money for them. And like, it's probably the most popular game in the world. Like, but 
Come on, like the work that Toys for Bob have done with Crash Bandicoot has been incredible. I obviously have a uh, a vendetta against Activision because they took Vicarious away from me, who were doing so well with uh, Tony Hawk's. So uh, I'm not too happy with them anyway. But if people have been laid off, then this is horrible. But if even if they haven't been laid off, but they've all been moved to just do A or B, and there's no option of C, then it's still a pretty shitty situation, in my opinion. What do you think? Yeah, hugely. Sh- I mean, yeah, I mean, they're saying they haven't la- laid people off, that they're not downsizing. That could be the truth. Even with that, this is the worst gaming news of this year. It's this is when I read this, I was devastated. I was just like, I can't believe that they're doing this. As you said, after what happened to Vicarious Visions, mm-hmm. two fantastic development teams who have brought you know brought back two franchises. Yeah. in the most amazing way i mean i'm i'm literally i'm still playing through um the spyro reignited trilogy yeah and just enjoying them so much um finished spyro one spyro two playing through spyro three um and and yeah and obviously with with, with, with crash bandicoot and and just everything just everything that these guys have been a part of and as, as I've said many times, I was just so impressed by them. And, and my dream was for them to be working on a, a Jack and Daxter remastered or a remastered trilogy. And, and then to hear that they are now just going to be chucked on to supporting Call of Duty and just, yeah, just cogging a machine, probably creating skins and guns from, you know I mean? It's just what a waste of potential and, and passion. And, and we saw from the, um, you know, a couple of the members of staff that left um, basically saying like, you know, was kind of thinking of leaving and this kind of just made the decision for me to do so. It's just sad. It's just really sad. And I mean, yeah, Call of Duty, it's a big franchise and everything like that. And people like that. Great. Fantastic. But when I see other franchise franchises and, and, and in a way other talent just being killed off just to consolidate one project it's just yeah it's really shitty it's really shitty yeah i think obviously you want every game to be a success but not at the cost of other games other companies and people like if these people have lost their jobs then they deserved i hope that they get picked up straight away because the work that they've done over the last i'm trying to think when crash bandicoot insane trilogy was it five years, maybe four years, something like that? Like, yeah, last that, yeah. four years, yeah. Like, but they've been doing work before then and all the development mm. of this. So, like, it's been so good. Like, and they deserve to be able to make the games that they want to make. And maybe leaving Toys for Bob and getting a, as far away from Activision as they can mm. is maybe a great thing for them to happen in their careers. But it sucks that. It's just diluting the gaming industry by sucking yeah. everything into Call of Duty, sucking everything into Fortnite. And if you like those games, that's great. Go nuts. Mm. But it's just, I hate it because it's just taken away the possibility of more games for people that maybe like to play a, a larger selection of games or, or like yourself and myself, where we like the nostalgia feeling of, and we want remakes of like those classic games as well as new games, of course. But you want Jack and Daxter, and I want like uh, so many different games. I want yeah. Sly to be remade, you know, and, and those sort of things. Sly or even like and... sequels to those games. You know, we, we're, yeah, we're, new ones, we're talking like about a Spyro Bandicoot, 4. Or, yeah. Oh, I like, love a Spyro 4, yeah. yeah like, I mean, it really looked like the return of the 3D platformer was happening, you yeah. know, like the, 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 for those, the, you know, for Crash 4 coming in and being so good. Um, and yeah, and we had like medieval and 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 other ones, and I thought, okay, this is like the, this is the, they're coming back. Like we're going to get some new ones, and now that's just kind of killed off all hope of that. Um, oh, yeah. all, all we've got is Ratchet and Clank as the, like basically the surviving, and that's not a platformer, I know, but um, that style of game, yeah, like which you'd probably put them all in the same sort of category, and there's no. 
visible future for them right now because those co- obviously Ratchet and Clank's different. That's Insomniac, and they're incredible. But um, yeah, there's no future for Crash Bandicoot at the moment. Who's going to do it? Naughty Dog aren't going to touch it. I don't no, think like, they're no. too busy. Like, and then same with Spyro. Who's who? Who's going to make a new Spyro? Yeah, we have to wait ten years until they do something with that. It's just, it's just. A, or, or, it's or a bad, I hope bad taste. off the back of this is that we we see, you know, maybe like some of those developers that were part of Toys to for Bob and, and for Carrie's Visions maybe merging get to merge together and make their own little team and start to you know whether they get it crowdfunded or whatever and, and start to kind of um work on those kind of projects again because yeah that's the hope isn't it because i suppose that's happening over with i can't remember what it's called is it haven uh jade jade raymond's yeah yeah, yeah yeah she's yeah. just taken a load of uh stadia yeah developers and said come work for us under there and people are, that'd be great if these guys got together like and did something and went under a new umbrella mm-hmm. Just avoid Activision. Don't don't let them buy you. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's the moral of this story. Definitely, definitely. Next story: Sony really hated PS4 crossplay confidential documents reveal. This is over at The Verge by Tom Warren. It's no secret that Sony held back. PS4 cross-platform play for years, but new confidential documents and emails reveal just how much Sony was against letting people play the same games with their friends on other platforms. Sony initially blocked cross-platform play for both Rocket League and Minecraft, despite Nintendo and Microsoft both enabling players to play across Xbox and Switch. The issue really blew up when Sony blocked Fortnite crossplay in 2018 and players were angry. It now appears that Sony may have been holding off out to offset potential revenue losses. In the months leading up to Sony's decision to block Fortnite crossplay in 2018, Epic Games had pleaded with Sony to enable crossplay emails in the Epic Games v Apple case reveal. Quote, I can't think of a scenario where Epic doesn't get what we want. What that possibly went out the door when Fortnite became the biggest game on PlayStation, said Joe Kreiner, Epic Vice President of Business Development. Kreiner proposed, quote, we announced, we announced crossplay in conjunction with Sony. Epic goes out of its way to make Sony look like heroes. Epic even offered to, to brand its E3 presence with PlayStation or add unique characters exclusive to PS Plus subscribers to sweeten the deal. Let's make this a huge win for us all. Epic's not changing its mind on the issue, so let's just agree on it now, said Kreiner. Sony didn't agree. Gio Corsi, Sony's senior director of developer relations at the time, dismissed the idea of crossplay, noting that cross-platform play is not a slam dunk no matter the size of the title. A clear reference to Epic's flex about Fortnite's dominance on PlayStation. Quote, as you know, many companies are exploring this idea and not a single one can explain how cross-console play improves the PlayStation business, says Corsi. Uh, but as of August 2019, it appears that Sony may have found a worthy argument, a way to potentially siphon off money from its competitors in exchange for access to PlayStation players. The email correspondence doesn't reveal where the issue ultimately ended up, but a document entitled Cross-Platform Policy Requirements and Process from August 2019, after Sony's change, reveals how Sony may now approach crossplay, a a cross-platform revenue share, forcing publishers to pay a Sony a royalty whenever PlayStation players contribute more than a certain percentage to the bottom line of a cross-platform game to offset the reduction in revenue from Sony enabling crossplay. I won't go any more into the uh, article there because it goes into a lot of detail, but yeah, this is a little bit, um, a little bit dodgy. I mean, we, we knew kind of stuff like about this before, you know, obviously that Sony did not want to get involved with crossplay and things like that, but yeah, are they they only they only seem to crumble at the end because they are getting a little fee out of it. Yeah, it's a little uh, <laughs> uh, oh, it's, listen, I we we try here at Shifted Crab to see the good in things. That is that that's what we came in here to do. Um oh, but you can't defend it. You can't defend it. Like this just reminds you, and I think sometimes we have to remember that Microsoft, Sony, 
Nintendo are companies. They are mm. businesses. Like, and sometimes you just want them to do the right thing for the customers and the fans. And yeah, we get cross-play. No, it doesn't affect us, but the reason they're allowing it and the way that they're going about it still is a bit shitty. Yeah. When, you, when you've got Nintendo yeah. and now allowing this on their system yeah, and then, and then PlayStation are charging for it, you know something's a bit wrong. Yeah, but I guess this around. is, yeah, exactly. And I guess like with the stance they were taking at that time, uh, particularly, they were dominating. Um, mm. And I think that their mindset was always like, well, why should we? You know what I mean? Like what, we, like, what are we getting out of it? Like, why should we let people play on another platform when they could just be playing on ours? But um, obviously the mindset has completely changed then. Like, you know, the general mindset, um, how, how quickly things turned around. Um, but yeah so i mean and it, and it states in the article that sony are the only ones of the the three platforms that the three publishers to receive any uh money from crossplay so hmm, i wonder how long sony. that will continue <laughs> this will either set a precedent that the others will now ask the same yeah or that sony will get forced into dropping that side of things it depends mm. how much uh, traction this picks up i guess mm. But it's just, yeah, I, you know, I understand, yeah, I understand what you're saying with Sony's mindset changing because obviously they were miles ahead of the competition in the last generation, really. Like, yeah, exactly. But they still are pretty far ahead in numbers. Yeah. I know we're going to touch on uh, some other numbers there in this, but Sony are doing very well. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I think the only reason that they might not get as many. Uh, cross-party games being sold on their console is because Xbox puts everything on Games Pass. So it doesn't take long for that to appear on Games Pass. So yeah, more people might play it there, but I'm sure Sony has a huge share of the the player base. Mm-hmm. Like, they make enough money, man. <laughs> you make enough money, man. Calm down. Calm down. It's like Twitter. Twitter today have announced that you can tip people on on on. But if you like their tweet, you can tip them money. No way. Yeah. Oh my. It's God. called the tip jar. Like you could, like oh yeah, you like this tweet? Here's twenty bucks. Like like, fuck off. <laughs> like there's a like button. That's what it's for. Like. God, I'm gonna get tweeting again. I know. Yeah, let's make some money. <laughs> but it's really interesting that um you know all all of this has come out of this uh, Epic v Apple um court case which is going on, and I feel like every day there's like a little story that comes out of it because so much stuff's getting unraveled from the, all the intricate stuffs uh, you know including like playstation yeah exactly yeah there, there's there's so much stuff that's going to come out of this so yeah keep I, 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 yeah i saw a tweet who's the guy who did uh the west wing is it andy, oh uh andy sorkin uh, what's his name uh, yeah uh, yeah that was uh, and is it Aaron sorkin aaron sorkin aaron sorkin aaron sorkin yeah yes yeah. so i saw someone say i can't wait for him to do the film yeah, <laughs> like yeah, this. it's definitely an Aaron Sorkin oh, film. Yeah. Definitely. But moving on to other big numbers and money being made, Nintendo Switch passes 84 million sold as company records record profits. Uh, this is over at Eurogamer by Tom Phillips. Nintendo's 2020 was one of one for the record books. The company earned its best ever operating profit of 6 billion and its second best year of revenue at 16.6 billion uh, dollars by the way sorry I should say uh, Nintendo Switch now sits at 84.59 million consoles and 587.1 million games sold by comparison Wii's uh, by co- comparison Wii Nintendo's top selling home console shifted 101 million consoles Wii U struggling to hit 14 million but Nintendo also expects a decline in profit and revenue for the current financial year ending 31st March 2022 unable to match the same level of pandemic boosted sales seen by Switch and its breakout success annual crossing new horizons over the past 12 months Perennial bestseller Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has now passed 35.4 million copies sold with Animal Crossing New Horizon on 32.6 million copies after a year of release. I can't believe that still. It's insane. Um, 
Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Pokemon Sword and Shield, and Super Mario Odyssey have each sold more than 20 million copies total. Ring Fit Adventure has now passed 10 million sold. Um, recent release, uh, Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury shifted 4 million copies in its first six weeks, showing there's still plenty of success to be had in re-releasing Wii U games for a wider audience. So yeah, big, big numbers. Yeah. Slowly approaching that Wii um, number. Is it going to overtake it? Um, if it stays like it is, like it, you think every year it's going to wind down a bit. But the yeah. beauty of the Switch is that every year another group of kids get to the age yeah. where they want their first console. I know even you're thinking about it as yeah. well. Yeah, like, I'll be... There'll be three so right there. All, and it's the perfect first console. Yeah. Like, first pro, like you try them out, obviously, like the 3DS and stuff like that. You, yeah. Like, but then well, you're going to put a bit of money in and go, okay, this is a proper piece of equipment. Definitely. Like, there's always a new generation for that. It's the gift and, that keeps on giving. Yeah. So I think until they release something different, their numbers will stay going up. And it's just a behemoth. You know, they market themselves so well with the Switch. Like, it is a genius product. Like, and they know their lane. And sometimes they dip out of it. The, you should not be playing Apex or anything like that on the Switch. They need, like, but they, uh, the games that they have and the console, it's a, it's a, it's a feat of brilliance, I think. But it's incredible that you can, you know what I mean? And especially, like, you know, if, if you, know, you said, but like, yeah, kid, the yeah. kid's playing it and they haven't got a, yeah. Uh, a PS4 or a PS5 or an Xbox mm. One X, you know, that, that, and they've got that Switch there. And the fact that you can play yeah. those type of games on, on that console, it's insane. Oh, yeah, um, it's incredible. And, yeah, and, and they noted there that, obviously, this year is a lot quieter to, to last year, which really spiked in sales. But if you just look at their sales consi- like since release, it's yeah. just been a consistent seller, particularly oh, yeah. in, like, you know, like locations like Japan and stuff like that. It's crazy. And yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going to overtake the Wii. And that's crazy to think about that. Like we, when those Wii sales numbers um, became what they were, like I didn't think that we were going to see that from a Nintendo console again, especially, especially when what our, the Wii U did, Especially yeah. with the Wii U. But I was thinking about this the other day. Like, you know, everyone thinks about the Wii U as a flop and obviously selling 14 million uh, consoles it was. But if we think of it more as, a prototype for the Switch. Hmm. It's got to be one of the most successful prototypes ever, right? Because <laughs> like, look at the end product. <laughs> you could be the uh, PR person for Nintendo, uh, <laughs> like Nintendo of America. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, like as a prototype, fantastic. Yeah. Like uh, as a console, yeah. absolutely appalling. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Because they were like they they halfway. were halfway there, you know. They, they were halfway there. Like they they had the idea, like oh, it's just like kind of console thing where you can kind of take it away from the TV and play it. And like they were just didn't quite I have the yeah, idea there. I think you're on something though. I think the the Wii the Wii, to the Wii U to the Switch is the best example of console evolution, where mm. you have that weird middle bit. Yeah. which has both parts of it yeah and then it gets to where it's going to be it's like it's like humans going from ape to neanderthal it's, it, it, it's, to human. Yeah. it's like um it's like if it was a pokemon mm-hmm. it'd be like um uh caterpie <laughs> was the wii yeah. <laughs> and kakuna was the wii u yeah. it's just this shit thing that just does harden it's like well that's it <laughs> Doesn't just doesn't do does. anything. Just yeah. hold on. Just hold on. Yeah. Get through it. Eventually, it's going to be a butterfree. All right. Yeah. It's going to be this beautiful butterfree switch, and um, yeah. That's the yeah. perfect analogy. <laughs> that is the perfect analogy. It's exactly that. It is that. It is that. But, yeah. Meanwhile, over at Xbox, Xbox has never turned profit on any of its devices. This is over at IGN by Matt T.M. Kim. Xbox Vice President Laurie Wright has been called to testify in the Epic v. Apple court case, another story we we get as as a third-party witness and give insights into the gaming market as a console partner. Do you reckon they all, like, hated this, by the way, this bloody court case? Oh, "Oh, for God's sake. Like, we've got to 
testify and all of our little dirty laundries going out there. Oh, yeah, her, definitely. Her testimony sh- has shed light on some of Xbox's internal workings, including how Xbox has never made a profit off of hardware through any of the Xbox iterations. During an exam, exam. Oh Jesus, I can't talk tonight. During an exam, I can't say. Wait, right, let me breathe. During an examination, Epic's lawyer Wes Earnhardt began a line of questioning on the profit. Pro, oh my God, profitability of console hardware. Earnhardt asked Wright, "How much margin does Microsoft earn on the sale of the Xbox consoles?" To which Wright responds, we don't. We sell the consoles at a loss. Just to be clear, Microsoft, uh, just to be clear, does Microsoft ever earn a profit on sale of an, on the sale of an Xbox console? Wright follows up. No, Wright says. Um, Wright explains that Microsoft keeps selling consoles at a loss because its business model is set up to deliver an end-to-end gaming experience and that hardware is critical to us delivering that gaming experience. These experiences include services like games, Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass. Um, And then in the rest of the article, it shows screenshots and a breakdown of their financial documents and stuff like that. But um, was this news to you at all? Like Adam, like, did, like the fact that they've never made any profit on a, on a console. Yeah, you'd expect. I know they they make consoles at a loss, but you'd think they'd get it back on the back end. But um, yeah, uh, I think this is. I think Sony must be pretty similar because I know they yeah. they made the was. It, was it the PS3 was a huge loss? Oh, the PS3 was just, that was yeah. just, like, the margin was just ridiculous on that. Yeah. And then the PS4, I know the, it was a a, a a slimmer margin, but I think we still had a loss. And I'm sure the PS5 is yeah. a loss. Yeah, I know that uh, the, I, consoles always sell at a loss. Um, I, I, at least I thought for a, a good few years i thought that eventually they get to a point where they make start making profit on them but although it's never really about that as you know yeah it's no. always about the actual games and the attach rate and stuff like that but the fact that xbox had never actually made any profit on any of their consoles it's was kind of it's kind of surprising but then we're not thinking about it it's not that surprising because the xbox life cycles are not normally that long no you know what i mean like the the, the xbox wasn't out for that many years before the xbox 360 um xbox 360 probably the more the the, the longest lifespan in that you would expect maybe some profitability at the end of it yeah. um and then the xbox one obviously it's just i don't think enough of them were sold to get to that point but um uh, the thing is though with microsoft it doesn't really matter to them does it like they they no. can afford to just make it on loss they, 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 they've got that division they got that cash bundled up. They can just keep chucking it out there, mm-hmm. and um, and I I imagine they're operating in a very similar way with Game Pass right now because they're obviously operating yeah. at a huge loss uh, with Game Pass, um, and probably working on the system similar to what uh, Amazon did for many years. I mean, yeah. Amazon. It was. I mean, it wasn't even that long ago. It was hit that Amazon turned over their first profit. Yeah, and now look at. Yeah, now now they just dominate the world because they just undercut everyone, and that's obviously. Yeah. But yeah, just interesting stuff. Yeah, it's um, it's it's very interesting that all of these things that are coming out of this court case, which is completely unrelated to. Uh, I know. Yeah, going. no one's even to- like none of our news today is about Apple. Yeah. Like versus <laughs> Epic, it's about all the other stuff that's coming out of this. But yeah, for exactly. Both companies. Exactly. I'm sure we'll have uh, lots to say on on whatever comes from from this case, but for now, it's just funny to get all these little juicy details. Last story of the day: long-running official PlayStation magazine becomes Play Magazine. This story is over at Eurogamer by Wesley Yin Paul. The long-running official PlayStation magazine has become Play Magazine, mark- marking the end of official video game magazines. OPM, which has been going for 25 years, was the last officially licensed console magazine in the UK after official Nintendo magazine closed in October 2014 and official Xbox magazine closed in March 2020. 
In an FAQ, Future Publishing said, quote, all good things come to an end. And along with Sony, we felt that the official PlayStation magazine had finally earned a well-deserved retirement. However, we still love PlayStation and magazines, and we know you do too. So Play Magazine came to life. However, uh, end of quote, However, the same editorial team behind OPM is making play with previous editor Ian Dean at the helm. It's a better outcome than that experienced after future folded official Xbox magazine, letting its staff go. In a statement issued at the time, Bath-based Future said that the decline in video games retail had impacted the sales figures of its magazines. Official PlayStation magazine began life in November 1995 to coincide with the launch of PS1 in Europe. The official, officially licensed magazine model involved the publisher, in this case, Future, play, uh, paying the console manufacturer, in this case to Sony, a license fee in order to slap the word official on the cover of the mag. See, Sony getting those little fees again. Oh, yeah. At its peak, at its peak before the emergency of the internet, OPM was comfortably the best-selling video game magazine in the world. And by the end of the 90s, was shifting half a million copies a month before the likes of FHM. According to Future, OPM had a circulation of 21,117. Now, I just had to chuck this in there because... You know me, Adam. I love my my gaming magazines and stuff like that. And this really was, um, yeah, quite sad because I I love collecting games magazines, and OPM was one of my OG like collections. Like I, I I'd collected magazines before that with um, like Mean Machine, Sega, and things like that. But in terms of PlayStation, I used to get. And I remember you saying the same. You used to get yeah. a official PlayStation magazine every month. Yeah. That demo disc on the front. Uh, you know what I mean? That, that demo disc was just full of so many treasures. And and I used to just love going to the reviews and see what the they latest stuff was coming out was. And um, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, this is the state we're in, obviously, right now with, with magazines as a, as a whole. And um, it scares the shit out of me because I know one day going to get because i subscribed to edge i used to subscribe to to games tm they folded yeah. uh, they, they were under future publishing i think and um and i'm just waiting to hear, hear that those dreaded words of like one day like edge saying like you know what this is it now we're finally like we're gonna we're gonna stop but i hope it, that day doesn't come at least anytime soon but um yeah, yeah i mean uh, you got any any thoughts on this at all adam or you know what i've I have I have thoughts on it. Like what I want to say is I remember with OPM and another one, uh, Games Master. Games Master was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah me, and, I was in Games Master. I I, I, I wrote into them. Yeah, um, about a, the the very first Assassin's Creed. Um, but the me and my friend growing up used to go to the spa, which was not a relaxation place it was a shop in the uk that there isn't too many of them now but yeah you go to a spa as a news agent yeah um, i know spa yeah yeah i was saying it for the american viewers yeah, yeah. Have a clue <laughs> what about. Um, and i would pick up opm and my friend would pick up uh games master and we'd go back to my house he'd bring his games with him or whatever and we'd swap magazines and we'd just yeah. read them and just swap them and so good spend the day it'd be after school like and we just read all these articles about all these games coming up and going, this is incredible. And it's a sad day because we've both said we're a big fan of the written word and we love journalism mm. and mm. I love writing. And my dream was always growing up was to be in the games industry, either as a journalist or as a voice actor or on screen like this. Mm. And it's a, like, it's a dying breed now. And I'm the one about this itself. So they're getting rid of the official PlayStation magazine, but it's becoming Play Magazine. It's becoming Play Magazine, yeah. So it, it, from what it sounds like, it's continuing in some form at least. So that's good. So like this, you know, but it's not the official. Like, so this is the end, officially yeah. the end, <laughs> officially, no pun intended, of yeah. any official con like uh, console magazines. Mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just, just I, I'll just grab this because I've got like a bunch of, um, yeah. bunch of them down there. So I'll just grab, one of the oldest ones I could find. So this one's um, what year? Oh, this is August '97. 
So this is uh, number tw- issue 22. Um, what are they reviewing? Got, so it's got um, reviewed Actua Golf 2, Tiger Shark, Warcraft 2, War Gods, Machine Hunter, Space Jam, Dragon Heart, Fire and Steel, Konami Open Golf, and Hyper Tennis Final Match. Wow. Um, but yeah, like... But I used to just absolutely adore official PlayStation magazine uh, back in the day. And and then when I got a little bit like when I got older, I started to actually realize that. Um, and I know they say that they just pay, paid a fee to slap official on the thing, but I do feel like they, it was a little bit like, I started to come to the realization that it was a little bit like propaganda. Um, oh. and, and that I was actually just reading, you know, obviously, how much can you trust the reviews if they're like obviously it's an exclusive yeah Yeah. and then that's when i started discovering like other magazines like um i think at that point i started get yeah like i started i I really got into games tm which games tm was like my favorite uh which are like it was basically the alternative to edge it was like the uh, the new up-and-comer but i loved because it covered all the different systems and also retro stuff but um but yeah, and I always see like every time I go into like the co-op or something like that or in Tesco's, I see official PlayStation mag on there. I thought uh, sometimes I think I, I might just grab an issue just to see no, like what it's like these right days because yeah. I haven't read it since like the PS2 um, like kind of time. But but yeah, if it wasn't for that magazine, I don't think I'd have ever. I, but it's, well, no, that's not true. I would have. But it's because of that magazine that I found a love for Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Because of the demo disc. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake, demo. I played that level again and again and again, and that made me just want that game so bad, so bad. Like, it, I think that was the first game I ever had true hype for. And yeah. I was still young, but I was just like, I want to play this. I don't understand any of it, but I want to play it. Like, I, oh, God. There's a really, I'll have to link it to you in Slack yeah. after it, actually. Um, but there's a really good article on on Eurogamer about demos and, and yeah. how, you know, and in the comments, it's so cool. Like, people were commenting underneath, like, their experiences okay, yeah. like that. Play, a lot of people talking about Metal Gear Solid uh, and particularly Metal Gear Solid 2, that demo that we got um, on oh, the Tank yeah. Mission. Yeah. Um, yeah, just so many, so many cool memories. But yeah, you mentioned it like, ah. Uh, like it's hard to, especially when you talk to younger people explaining what it was like in the 90s before we had the internet what it was magazines were the thing like it's so like if you, you were like dying to get the new copy or something to read the review of like i don't know like the new gta like and just think and looking at screenshots and because we didn't have any websites or, or trailers like we'd just you'd, you'd be studying those little screenshots in the, yeah. in the magazine and just because that's all you had of it and just like oh my god just imagine playing it one day or, or like oh. oh that was it Finding out, especially, I remember for for me especially, uh, when Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was coming, and yes, the internet was there, but I didn't get the internet till a bit later anyway, and neither did my best friend. And we used to have, same person, have all the magazines, and we'd sit there just reading any bit of information we had, mm, mm. and we'd just be like, oh my God, the map's going to be so big, this, this, and this, <laughs> and just going over every detail and just being so incredibly hyped for this game. And it's it's a shame now that we, even though it's great that we have everything at the palm of our hands, our uh, fingertips, and we can go find anything, that joy of knowing on a Thursday mm. or that when Games Master came out, I, could, I was going to go grab it and I could read it when I got home. And that was my evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flicking through it and just in going, reading it like three or four times. Yeah, exactly. Like, you studied every page. Yeah. Like, I remember, oh, it was I the best. It was the best. And we're so oversaturated with information now that nothing, you, you just don't reread articles that much. You read an article and you go, I read another one and see what they think. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, us old people here going, oh, it was our day. It was oh, much back in my like, day. Yeah, which wasn't it. But it was, you, it was fantastic. You bloody young kids, you have no idea uh, what you've got. No idea, mate, no idea. But that brings to an end to uh, this week's Shifty Crab News Break. It's been a fun one. It's been a fun one. Yes, it's been good. Even though it's been some shitty stories, it's been it's still overall a positive experience. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, 
yep you can uh, check this out on our youtube channel every friday and you'll get a new um podcast episode next wednesday but um yeah thanks for joining us today adam uh, a pleasure as always um yeah and we will see you next time until then stay shifty <laughs>